Hi all, I have a remarkable thematic game to show you today. This is game 11 of TSEX season 14, super final. So in game 11, the opening was actually the French defense, leader playing white, stockfish black, the French defense, stockfish forced to play the Guimard variation. This is a variation I've had some fun with from Watson's uh, Dangerous Weapons in the French book, which I recommend, as well as his landmark French defence book, which you should just learn for pawn chains, even if you don't play the French defence. It's wonderful strategic insight. Uh, so we have here knight g f3, knight f6, e5, knight f, knight d7. And now knight b3, this is the end of the book. We have b6. This seems quite a logical move. Sometimes it will help support c5 once the knight moves. And sometimes it may help bishop a6, maybe knight b8, bishop a6, or a5, bishop a6. Because black really wants to try and trade off uh, this light square bishop. It can be a prisoner within this pawn chain. On the other hand, many games of Petrosian, he just sticks it on b7, consoles queenside, and attacks on the king side sometimes. So it really just depends. c3, we have knight e7 h4 now this is really quite interesting this h4 prelude because fundamentally white's pawn break should be later uh to go to like f4 f5 in the ideal world the f5 pawn break will guarantee great prospects on the f file white's pawn chain like this going in this direction shows that white should really maybe putting forces on this side of the board that's where the pawn chain kind of dictates the f5 break as well as opening up the f file uh, could also create some potentially dangerous past pawns. And this, by playing for h5, it kind of softens black's ability to play g6 sometimes, so as a defensive measure against the f5 break. We have c5 and now h5. So this is laying the groundwork for an f5 pawn break, uh, really, after h6. And we see a pretty direct indication. Leader's fully aware of this pawn break. Knight h4, so that use of the h4 square which has now been vacated as well facilitating f5 that's really in sight now stockfish releases the tension here and it seems does black really have enough counterplay on the queen side uh to justify this uh given this f5 pawn break uh coming soon we have queen g4 putting pressure on black's king side a5 bishop e2 a4. The nature of this position, very close strategic. In general, it's been shown to favor neural networks when playing against alpha beta search engines. And here, a3. This kind of deprives black a natural pawn break now. Uh, so not even b4. As black, I would have been keen myself, intuitively, to play for b4 at least. And then maybe try and undermine later with a4, a3 to undermine the whole pawn chain at its base. Uh, so understanding pawn chains where, where they can be exploited at the base or the most exploitable base available is very important so this move yeah seems a little bit maybe strategically suspect from from a human perspective knight b8 here we have f4 knight b6 bc6 uh we have now knight f1 it's very fancy knight maneuver maneuvers going on here knight a5 bishop e3 we have knight b3, rook b1, rook d1, pardon me, rook d1, king goes to d7, very interesting, bishop f2, king c7, knight e3, so very fancy manoeuvring, king b7, queen h3, which means actually g4 is now available for f5, black actually reacts aggressively, g5, so does this really take it out of the equation now, this whole f5 idea from white, h takes, F takes not necessarily g4 king a6 knight hg2 rook g8 bishop f3 so high level shuffling bishop h4 going on those dark squares which have been weakened with pawns on light squares the adjacent dark squares are a great interest here we have g5 as an example of things going wrong if bishop g7 bishop takes and now f5 is actually quite dangerous with the threat of f6. So white is very well poised here for this f5 break here. For example, this position would see black being weakened d5, and then there's two connected pass pawns in the center. Big advantage to white. On bishop d7 instead, let's have a look at this. 
this mechanism here is still fundamentally the same. D5 is weak, for example. Uh, so that's one perk here to undermine Black's pawn chain. Uh, so G5, we have Bishop G3, G takes, Knight takes, Rook A7, Bishop H4, pinning the Knight, Bishop D7, White castles. And the Rooks seem quite ready to try and use that F file soon. Rook F2, H5, G5, very cautious. Now, with this pinned pawn, the power of the pinned piece or pawn is illusionary. So if knight takes, there's queen takes. So we have g5. And white has kind of sealed this f6 square, if we look at this. Now, wouldn't this be nice for an outpost, uh, a juicy outpost? And you might also consider, if that ever takes, there's two connected pass pawns against zero in that situation. So this pass pawn would be really uh, emphasized, underlined, if it had a fellow connected pawn working with it so we have knight g6 knight takes queen takes bishop g2 and now there is the possibility of rook f6 queen e8 rook f6 played here hitting e6 bishop c8 queen g3 rook c7 bishop h3 so that e6 target starting to be painful bishop g7 and here Lila just leaves that rook to be taken king h2 it does look like a wonderful exchange sack let's have a look concretely black played rook f7 believing leela basically if bishop takes the two connected pass pawns are very dangerous looking and for example knight g2 is very useful here supporting not just g6 but also hitting e6 so for example like this variation shows we can target e6 as well as push for g6 so both of those are kind of showing blacks a bit overloaded what will be clearly uh, better there uh, let's look at this again this kind of thing to get some more details about this uh, possibility if rookie eight g6 then and then the two connected pass pawns with a like tactic start to work like this with f7 and that's very nice winning for white and here uh, on g6 queen g8 if queen h6 instead again bishop takes rook takes crashing through with f7 these pawns are amazing uh so huge advantage for white so rook f7 wisely not accepting leela's uh exchange sacrifice uh so knight g2 yeah knight f4 seems a great move here it's aim four the queen first goes to e3 though so that covers d2 so maybe the knight could have stepped in sometimes to e4 so releasing the rook from duty a bit centralizing the queen and now uh knight f4 and now this rook does move so d2 is covered c1's covered uh, well not that it needs to be so rook g1 uh king b8 again let's test the waters here bishop takes f6 taking the exchange is a bad idea two connected pass pawns uh e6 f7 stuff like that is on the cards so king b8 g6 it just looks like a wonderful strategic game uh, a kind of glamorous pawn break if ever there was one against the french defense structure f5 is a classic pawn break and um yeah this just seems absolutely wonderful stuff uh, if, if taking here again let's just test the exact configuration f7 does the job so uh rook h8 king g2 king a7 queen f2 rook goes here to b7 on knight a5 is an example there might be a tactic like bishop takes e6 here for example like this and the queen crashing through and actually that single pawn alone here well there are two connected pass pawns here but this is too strong because of e6 e7 so if the bishop uh yeah this this is unplayable this kind of position basically because of e6 e7 there's tactics like that so that's actually unplayable that variation so queen f2 we have rook b7 uh, so now bishop takes e6 here is played bishop takes f6 on bishop takes e6 knight uh, sorry rook takes to take there and then bishop f6 this is very good for white as you might expect White's got that past the e pawn, the f file's good. That's very nice. So uh, we have bishop takes f6, bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes h8, bishop g8, 
if queen takes then knight takes uh, so bishop g8 bishop f6 knight c1 finally the knight does something uh, we have queen e3 and now the knight tries to be annoying knight d3 what is this knight doing what is it trying to do as an example knight a2 white can push through with uh, e6 so maybe the knight's trying to distract from this this kind of thing where that e5 square now d5 is hit so it's not just about the pawn it's about d5 again and if for example this this is actually possible uh crashing through with a very strong attack against the black king or the g pawn crashing through uh and here in this line there's also of course rook e5 that's pretty strong as you might expect uh getting out of the way of any pinning uh before crashing through again taking on d5 so these lines are pretty bad for black so trying to distract white it seems at the cost of a pawn uh does it really help it is opposite color bishops now king g3 this is a remarkable <laughs> king uh we're about to see now this is the first step <laughs> of a, a, a remarkable king journey uh, sometimes when the opponent has a bishop of a certain color the other color is good for the king sometimes as a kind of safety thing sometimes you you'd put the king on the opposite color but the king seems to be wanting to be an attacking piece here going to h4 but what is going on it is hitting h5 uh, that h5 is not actually uh, taken here uh, there might be some uh, danger, dangers you might think but sometimes yeah it, it is possible okay let's see though g7 queen d7 rook g5 it was possible here to take on h5 as an example i i couldn't find any ways that white's getting mated here but uh leader plays rook g5 rook c8 rook g1 and now we have queen f3 rook f1 some maneuvering King g5 the king is getting extremely adventurous b4 this looks like another desperate kind of distraction device b4 what is going on here if king a8 then rook h1 as an example this is an example white can actually crash through an exchange sack and the king coming up the board is very handy here for just herding uh the pawn like king goes to h7 and herding the pawn uh if we look at this again uh this this line uh, with the exchange sack uh, if for example uh king a8 instead then not you know not accepting it then white uh, tends to break through with the exchange sack here for example uh, so that's that's pretty good with the king crashing through uh, so we have actually b4 a takes rook c4 the king goes to h6 <laughs> The king is an attacking piece, Steinitz once wrote. Queen e6, queen f5, queen e8. So Steinitz was ahead of his time. <laughs> if the queen's hand come off, as you'd expect, it seems this is pretty good for white. White can basically crash through eventually uh, with e6, for example. So uh, we have queen e8, rook f3, and rook c6. Uh, queen takes h5 bishop f7 queen f5 and there seems to be a bit of a blockade going on uh, so people are wondering how is this actual blockade scenario lifted as Magnus Carlsen says he doesn't believe in blockades he said that once or twice uh, so here can the blockade be lifted well g8 is taken and again there is still another persistent looking blockade and it actually intrigued me i had to try and make sure that i knew that this was winning uh we're approaching the final position where both engines thought it was uh winning in fact i've just overshot it by several moves <laughs> sorry let's go back to rook h6 king b7 the game actually ended here pardon me the game ended here and i had to work out how can we prove white's winning here white okay is material up but it's opposite colored bishops which are notorious for the blockade possibilities creating a fortress <clears throat> so i went with uh rook h8 seems good taking on g8 it seems okay and now uh the idea it seems that seems very powerful in this position i don't want to test you on this it's pretty deep it's it's to play queen f3 
with the big idea of c4 and it doesn't seem to matter what black does in this position it's too much for the position uh because there's another issue of the bishop creeping in sometimes to the black position you know via e7 sometimes and d6 so there's actually two major issues of responsibility to handle c4 here and to handle this you know bishop infiltration i'll give you a couple of examples uh, if king c7 c4 d5 is clearly strong with the past pawns crashing through white's got a big advantage if queen c6 white plays c5 and now the bishop can come in the game very strongly for example like this is good uh where the queen's in actually on the dark squares and the queen is on the way <coughs> pardon me so it does seem here uh that after queen f3 with the idea of c4 it's it's pretty grim basically however uh black plays it uh so i'll take you to the game ending position again so both for it was like plus 10 by t set rules so to be adjudicated as a win uh for white uh so yeah a fascinating strategic struggle showing Ma uh leader is the real master of strategic pawn breaks preparing them well in advance Stockfish seemed a little bit clueless about the pawn breaks in the position. Uh, yeah, it's possible there was there was better counter strategic play available. Uh, so pretty advanced stuff positionally. If you enjoyed this game video, then please uh, click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. You can play other YouTubers. You can also test yourself in all the variations I've presented in this game, and maybe some more as well if I update the analysis uh, from the improved menu uh, puzzle books so a great new feature there I've been working on recently that has also a link to the annotated game as well so comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciated thanks very much oops